What is happening? Welcome to another picture video break. You got two today. You got another one. It's Gavin Williams. Um, he had this 12 strikeout game against the Jays. We're going to watch a lot of it. I don't know if we're going to get the entire way through, um, but uh, we got to see how he did this. Fastball upstairs at 95. Okay. I mean, that's really the bread and butter with Gavin Williams is fastballs upstairs. And then it's going to be hopefully sliders down in glove side and then curveballs for strikes as well. It's a really good four seamer when it's upstairs. You can see that's how he gets whiffs is 96 upstairs like that. And that has amazing ride to it. Gavin Williams lives and dies by that four seamer. It's just about the secondaries being good enough to complement them. 97 again. I mean, they're just trying. Schneider, who's been on a tear. I mean, keep in mind, Schneider also has been on a tear on, on hitting bad pitches, just so you let you know. You would know that if you knew about PLV, which is a pitch quality metric on the site pitchless.com. And if you go and check out the game log of Schneider, you'll see that he actually is hitting bad pitches. So, not good ones. Good to know. And there's just three amazing fastballs upstairs, and he gets them, right? <laughs> okay. All right, not even a single breaking ball in sight, just pounding, pounding, pounding. Fair enough. Another 98 upstairs. Like, you haven't seen a secondary yet. He just has that. And there it is. Oh, yes. Good stuff, Williams. Get me. Give me that free real estate at 77 curveball. After throwing all of those fastballs. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now you got him 0-2. And of course you're going to fastball upstairs. Now that's your bread and butter. That's what you do. Yep. 97. They can't catch up to it. Easy. This game's easy, guys. Oh, and there's another. That's a slider this time. And it does look like that Gavin Williams is going curveballs to lefties and sliders to righties. Very typical. Um, when you have a three-pitch mix like this, the general philosophy is you're allowed to get called strikes more with curveballs uh, against lefties. And then for righties, you just live down in glove side with a slider. I will mention, I think that more right-handed batters should be throwing sliders down and inside back foot sliders uh, to lefties. Um, Alex Bass was talking about curveballs back foot um, as well to the opposite handedness. Lefties can do that. Righties, for whatever reason, can't as much. I kind of think it's because of uh, the lefty swing path is more down and in um, than than righties, but that's another story. So that's a slider that you say, Nick, that is down. That's what you want. It needs to be away. Uh, guys like Guerrero can drop the barrel pretty well here. Um, and if you think about this from a lefty perspective too, like that's a mistake that often is in the seats, right? You need to get underneath it. You have to get underneath this. Um, and uh, Guerrero is good enough to stay in. Now he does get on the ground, which is good. Uh, as opposed to lift, but uh, showcases that there is a lot of drop on that pitch. And man, Springer, boy, that was it. And that's the thing. Like, you can see his timing is there, but he's underneath it because Williams gets a lot of rise on that, right? And that's that 97 down the middle that Springer just couldn't quite get to. But you see that he's on it. And what normally, see, normally means is that you got to throw a slider after. Yeah. Oh, no. It goes to the fastball back. Oh, never mind. Um, I thought you were going to see a slider after that because foul balls back mean that the batter is on it. But getting it more inside does mean that if he does the same timing, he's going to foul it off worse, which was what we saw here. This is him late on it. Right? Um, and so if you see that, you could probably go further upstairs because this is just YM lock, right? This is just belt high stuff, not even like thigh high. Uh, you, if you want to get that up to the letters, you probably do get a swing and miss here from Springer. But, of course, the book is a slider away and at 02, and Springer obliges. This is a really good one. We normally don't see that from Williams, this kind of slider. Uh, we normally see it floated up a bit. He actually has one of the worst uh, percentages of sliders being in the low location. That is low lock. Um, as the bottom third of the zone and underneath of all sliders in the majors. And to see him actually execute this is a big, big help for Williams, especially when you see Springer that on the fastball in the first two, fouling them both off. So great stuff there from Williams. Ah, that's down. Nope. Not happening. Yeah, I don't really want that. I want upstairs. I want only upstairs. There you go. Much better. Much better. 2-1. Oh, go inside now. Yes, please. Ah. It's interesting to see um, a guy like Williams. You generally don't see pitchers miss down on fastballs. Uh, it, it's just not really the thing. Maybe with sinkers a little bit. But for the most part, if you're seeing a guy that's low too often on a fastball, that means actually his uh, his front half either isn't getting it out um, far enough or his arm speed is too quick, right? It, just think of it as like the arm is getting out faster than the lower half. Top half over lower half is why you miss down more than you, you do up. 
And generally, that's not what happens. Normally, you get tired and your arm is the one that lags behind, not your bottom half. So I will always be um, a little weirded out when I see lower misses. It does generally mean more uh, adrenaline because it means you're rushing a little bit. But it's generally easier to fix than missing too high a lot because slowing down your, getting your arm to not be tired is a harder thing to do than to say like, okay, I just need to push off a little bit more with my bottom half. But that is the adjustment that you make. If you're missing a low a lot, that's about your bottom half and you have to focus on your back foot and really shoving off that rubber a little bit more. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't love that. Throw a slider, please. Yes! Oh, I, lo I love the call. <laughs> I mean, he's just throwing fastballs the entire time and throw a breaking ball 3-2. Like, there was no chance that that was a strike that he would have gotten. And he just missed it. But I love the I love the guts and I love the call on it. Oh, come on. He, he's slowing down his arm. This was a slowed arm uh, on that. And and this is also a man on base. And generally, you see the first time in an inning, uh, pitchers are generally a little bit worse from the stretch. Especially first time in the game. We saw in the last inning, though, with Guerrero. And that didn't really change anything. But uh, you generally do see like a miss in the first pitch when a guy gets on. It's just a different thing that you're doing. That's a really good pitch inside. But everything's getting a little bit too low for me. I wanted to get upstairs again. Ah, there you go. You slow down and you got the curveball first strike. Good. It's interesting seeing curveballs to righties as well. I was saying before that curveballs might be safe for lefties. We're seeing against righties too. Now if you do a tighter slider, that might work here. Oh, no. That's a terrible one-two pitch. Horrific. That is a giant mistake. And also for Chapman, who is expecting slow stuff, he's generally a fastball guy. Especially at one two, with Williams really leaning on the curveball in this one, he's expecting slow, and this is a mistake. I want to see this one more time. Oh my gosh, that should have been in the seats. Chapman is upset at that. Now you can really speed him up after that. Yeah, yeah, but that's the miss. I mean, at least he's getting it up though. That sounded good too though. Yeah. Oh, ha -ha. it's because it was down the middle, and the fact that he, I mean, sure he's on it, he's fouled it back down the middle, but he didn't crush it down the middle. Should give you like. I don't know, some sort of confidence, I think. I mean, that was so close. Chapman just missed that. But it's still like you made a mistake there at 2-2 and a high swing probability count. And uh, now you throw the slider. You do not throw a fastball now. Yeah, I throw the slider. Oh, close. Close, but you throw a better one now. There you go. Yeah. So, like, this was this was too far away. And what happens now, I mean, this never was a strike, right? Started started over here and went off. And Chapman feels like he earned the fastball 3-2 now. So this one, uh, this one is is starting here and coming off the plate. And that's why that one's a whiff. And also 3-2, Chapman is not thinking slider as much as he was in 2-2. So he's really actually selling out for fastball at that point. So a really good pitch there from Williams to execute it. Uh, unlike he did with the curveball in the previous 3-2 pitch, right? Man, this is this is 95 right there, Varsho. I honestly think uh, a team like the Jays that are generally very good at fastballs like this, we saw Springer miss on it. We saw uh, Chapman miss on it. We now see Varsho miss on it. And um, we saw Belt miss on it. Like, you can tell that Williams' four-seamer is legit here. Um, and this is a sky pitch. Um, it looked like off the bat this was um, more damaging than it was. That's a very good pitch because he's going to get underneath that. And it's really hard for him to get the barrel up properly to truly launch that pitch. So great stuff from, from Williams there. There's a curveball. He can't get a first rank. Come on, buddy. That's a mistake at 1-0. I mean, Kevin Biggio, we know that he is very passive at the plate, which I generally do like as, as hitters. I like more passive guys than aggressive ones because I think swing decisions are a really important thing. I think guys are more aggressive than they should be more often than not. Um, but that is kind of the one that you should be swinging at because I don't think you're going to get a better one. Now you're swinging at this one, right? At 1-1, which is not the one you want to swing at. So... Uh, one, two, you see that kind of swing. Um, I would probably go high heater here. Oh, you execute the curveball and he's told me he didn't get up to speed on that. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, I would just think that Kevin Biggio couldn't catch up to the, the fastball. And I felt most confident in it, but yeah, there you go. Backdoor, uh, curveball works for me. So uh, if you were here inside of playback.tv uh, slash pitchlist where I watch games on, by the way, I live stream every single morning, 10 to 12 p.m. at playback.tv slash pitchlist. We watch live games together and it's free, 100% free. There are no ads like it is on Twitch. Uh, there are no subs or anything like that. Just come on by 100% free. I answer all your questions. So if you want to learn more about pitching and watch stuff with me, 
go there. Playback.tv slash pitcher list. Every morning, every weekday morning, 10 to 12 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, but we watched Cole Raggins before. Reagans, man. And this is not as dominant. They both had two great starts. Williams is just overwhelming with four seamers, and that's cool. But what Reagans did is he sequenced, man. He was just completely uh, surgically taking down the Red Sox. While this with Williams is like, here's my four seamer. Do something with it. I'll have some curveballs at work. That's good. Maybe the slider sometime. But like, this is just pure four seamer dominance. I mean, look at that. That's just insane. And you could make an argument that, well, Nick, that's a better foundation, right? Like, that's such a good four seamer. Gavin Williams is just, you know, that that sets them up for more success. I don't disagree necessarily with that philosophy. And if you told me that both pitchers are at their peaks next year, I might even say that Williams is a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit better because the four seamer, I think, is better than Reagan's uh, four seamer. Still, um, Reagan's having all of those pitches is just insane. Um, but yeah, this foundation for Williams means that he has less of a, of like things to improve on, right? Like, it's just like, get that curveball and slider more consistent. I don't think his curveball and slider are as good as, as Reagan's as a curveball changeup cutter slider though. Um, I think the four seamer is better though. Oh, that's, man, I mean, that's some good stuff. I mean, yeah, this is what it is. His four seamer had a 50% CSW in this game. I mean, he's literally just like Blake Snell blueprint all day upstairs. That's life, you know. Um, I looked at the strikes on plot, and I actually thought he was more around here than he than he is. This is actually upper third, more so than I thought it was, um, which is way better, as you can see. Like these guys cannot handle this. Ah, oh, that's right down the middle at 97. Brandon Bell loves that. What does he do? Yeah, I mean, gives that a ride. That's the risk, you know. If it does come down enough. And if guys like Belt are like, no, I'm going to be just shaking, uh, going after a fastball. Like, this is a pitch that Belt usually destroys and is out of the park. So, I mean, maybe you could say something again about Williams' forcing having a little bit extra, just a little bit extra rise to get above the bat enough to get that just the, the worst launch angle and not on the barrel. But, yeah, it kind of shows, like, uh, you know, it shows both that he's susceptible, but also both that he has a little bit of a higher margin for error. It's a really good four seamer. It really is. I mean, think of it like Bryce Miller's. Think of it like, um, I I mean, we're talking about Pablo Lopez doing really well with it. But, like, Bryce Miller's is the one I want to compare that to. Brian Wu, too, um, has a very good one these days. Uh, there are a couple other guys I'm forgetting. Um, Pablo Lopez is really good, but I think it has more to do with command than it is actually the raw ability of it. Uh, but still, really good. Uh, I mean, Spencer Strider is obviously the, the main one there, like Hunter Green, those guys. Oh! That's a challenge, 97 up. He didn't throw the first two. The first two are not even there, you know? Like, that's down and away. I mean, look, if Gavin Williams can spot that down and away, I'm fine with it. I absolutely am. I'm not saying that's a bad pitch. It's never a bad pitch throwing a fastball here. I'm never going to say that. I uh, I mean, maybe in some scenarios, I'm like, don't do that. That's where he's looking or something. Fine. And it's much better up there. But I will never be upset at low four-seamers down and away, Right? Uh, I will be more down in middle and down and in, but down and away, like, that's just really hard, and that does open up the slider. So I'm never going to be upset about that if you're actually trying to do that, right? Um, and then you follow that up with down the middle in 96, and it's just like, oh, Guerrero. Like, he is getting away with some of these that you normally see that the Jays take advantage of, but the fact that Guerrero fouled that one off means that if you, like, that's on his mind, and he doesn't want to get beat on another one. And that's why you can challenge him out of the zone here, and he's going to do that, right? And that's just beautiful. I mean, when you see a guy like Guerrero swing and miss on a four-seamer upstairs, it's just like, dude. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's just that's just good stuff, you know? Uh, there's a good first-pitch slider. It's what got Springer on the last one, but I think Springer is up there thinking more, more fastball. And that's the end of the bat. Like, how Williams got out uh, Springer last time was fastball, fastball, slider. He reversed it here. Second time around, he went slider first. And he should get an out. Oh, my gosh. That was scary. Oh, boy. That was insane. You don't see that. Ooh. Kind of cool looking curveball. Definitely surprised him. If he surprised him, then I think you throw it again. I meant to pause. You're going to throw a fastball, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, look. 50% CSW. Call strikes and whiffs on this. Oh, you hit him. He got on the side of that one. 
If you get on the side of the ball, that means you're going to have more of that horizontal run. Um, that's not what you want. You want to stay on top of that. You just got on the side of that one, which is annoying. Oh, what happened? Oh, he, he tries to steal second on this. Oh, man, that's a that's a gift. What a gift. All right, because that was a terrible one. And now you don't throw a first pitch fastball. Uh, for, sorry, first pitch curveball, right? You throw a 94, which is not 97, down the pipe to Chapman, and he fouls it off. My like, Chapman, buddy, that's the best pitch you're going to get this entire at bat. Ah, uh, because now you're getting that slider, right? Now, this is a velocity drop, though. It's not 96 or 86, and it's 94. So keep that in mind with Williams here. Um, and you see the chasing on that. You can actually beat Chapman with the fastball upstairs. Now, there's no way he's looking for that. Yep, got him. He's, he's looking for a slider or a curveball after swinging at the other one, and he's just so self-conscious about it. 95, though, not 97, right? Not 97, 98. A changeup. Oh, hey, a changeup showed up. <laughs> it's the second time through the lineup. First time, I think, against a lefty. I mean, Brandon Bell, I guess. He didn't throw a change of first pitch there. Maybe he should have, honestly, because that was a mistake one uh, to Bell. I mean, it's not a good change from Williams. Don't expect anything, like, legitimate with that. I'm glad he got a first pitch strike on it. But, yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Got the edge on it. Uh, you go upstairs further with it. Are you going to try and do slider down and in or curveball? Yeah, he tried to do slider down and in. <laughs> I like that approach. Uh, that was an easy take because he's not looking for it, though. Like, Varsha wasn't looking for that slider. So if you're going to do that, you actually need to make it a very tempting one. Because Varsha wasn't expecting a down and in slider at that point. So if it starts out of the zone, he's not going to, like, he's not going to think it's going to come back over or anything like that. He's very surprised by it. So you have to make it tempting. If you're not making it tempting, he's not thinking anything comes back over the plate. So you, you got to be careful with that. So that's better. That's That would have worked in the previous one. But because you showed your hand that you might be doing it, it makes it worse. Also, this is a little too far inside. This needs to be down more. Inside makes this a little easier to uh, to get at um, and fell off. If it gets it down and under the bat, it's a lot easier, uh, a lot harder for him to adjust. Um, now you go fastball upstairs because you've kind of changed the speed. Oh, uh, I tried to do a changeup. Changeup's not your thing, though, dude. No, 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 no. Varsho isn't looking anything to anything down he's taking. You know, if he sees a low pitch right now, he's not going to swing at it. So he just followed that one through. If he wanted to be a fastball down away, bless him. But yeah, he was not going to swing at that. I don't like that pitch call at all. Nah, come on. Snail fastball upstairs. Don't get cute. I mean, okay. I uh, That's fine. I think he thought it was going to go out of the zone or something. Um, but I'm actually surprised he didn't swing at this because this starts in the zone like a fastball and then he takes it away. I would have... Gavin, your best pitch is a fastball. They can't hit this thing. Don't get cute at this point right now. Because, like, you don't have the best slider and change of command and stuff. And sure, you missed the fastball way before, but, like, keep going after that. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad you got it. I'm so really surprised it didn't get a swing from Varsha because that's a strike the entire way through. And at 83, like, I guess he just didn't expect it. And he saw the spin and froze and hoped it went out of the zone, I guess. But first pitch curveball, that's fine. I would expect the changeup to show up again. Yeah, it does, um, but it, I, I don't really think it, he needs to. Just throw fastballs, man. I don't think the changeup is that good because I, the reason I don't think the changeup is that good is because he's throwing it at times where guys aren't expecting low. Like, they see low and they let it go from Gavin Williams a lot, you know, especially as a lefty. Now, as a righty, it's a little different. You do see some low fastballs sometimes from, from Williams, but as lefties, you generally don't, and it makes it kind of easier to, to deny it. Um, also, it's just not that good of a pitch, I think. Oh, man, come on. Come on, just throw a fastball in there. It's okay. He's not going to swing. It's 3-1. Ah, so now you've thrown the down and away fastball. You've established that a little bit better. You go upstairs with the fastball, please. Okay, got the out. All right, I mean, yeah, yeah that's 3-2 pitch. I'm not going to be upset about that. Um, I do also think that lefties are better at the away pitch down um, than righties are. It's just weird. Um, first pitch 94 up in the sixth inning. He is certainly slowing down as this game goes on. And yes, I'm going to go all seven uh, innings here. Uh, slider for a strike. We'll take that. Oh, he gets the out. This is an out. Oh, I thought this was a foul ball. Sorry. Uh, I want to see this one more time. I thought that was a foul ball. That's an out. Oh, beautiful. All right. And then you get the first pitch free real estate with a slider up. You're going to throw another one? Why? Yeah. Oh, man, he gets that. He's not trying to do that. So I can't really give him credit. I mean, obviously, that's a good pitch, but that's not what he's trying to do. 
And I'm glad for Williams that it's working out, but that's not what he's trying to do. And because of that, you can throw the slider off of it, right? You just establish that in a way. doesn't matter what you try to do. You can't get that over the plate. You know, you can see how beat he is, uh, Schneider. And because that's over the plate, you give him a chance to get a hit here. Uh, that's foul. You're lucky because that could have been a pitch he beats out. Um, I would probably do a fastball upstairs and then follow it with a slider now if it does, that doesn't work. Slider again, another bad one. Gotta get that. It's even worse than the last one. Uh, uh, it's not the pitch call. I'll go, but I'm glad he got out. Change up again. The change up isn't good, man. I mean, I, that's what I understand that with belt OO pitch. We just saw the 97 that he took to the warning track. You throw the change up first pitch. I understand that. It's just not that good. And he still can't hit your fastball. It's 95, not 97. It is going down as the start goes on. 96, good to get there. Oh, wait to nail that. You go higher up. No, 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 no. I don't, I disagree with this. You saw Belt not be able to hit the 95. You just threw another fastball upstairs. Belt is like super cautious or like, um, I think mentally afraid of the fastball. And I feel like you got to attack that upstairs because that's your best pitch. What do we got here? Oh, he almost nailed it. But that was his intent was to be out of the zone. That was not to be in the zone. You can see the glove, right? Look at the catcher's glove. He's trying to get that down. So, but Belt just gives up on it. And to me, that kind of showcases like, man, you should have got, now you absolutely go with the fastball. If you don't go for the fastball, I'm surprised. Oh, look at that. I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, it worked. I think they were trying to get that one in the zone, not even down. Surprised that Belt went through it. I think he, I understand the sequencing here. Belt spits on the curveball before. And you do the gambit like I've talked about before. You throw two secondaries uh, or two breaking balls underneath. Cool. I don't know. I, I, I've i seen how good Williams' four-seamer is this game. And there's a part of me that feels like he's getting too cute with the secondaries. I don't think are nearly as good um, as that four-seamer. So I'm happy it's working. I am a little more skeptical about it. But, I mean, as you can see, though, when he is able to actually get strikes on curveballs and sliders he can be really good and keep he's keeping that curveball down for the most part which is really cool too man Guerrero just cannot hit your fastball he just can't uh, I would do a slider now yeah so I would say the reason I want to say a slider now is to just at least make it a little more um just just a little bit of doubt that it's not going to be a fastball when it's two strikes I mean, that's not that's never going to be called a strike if you're upset that that was in the box. That's never going to be called. So throw another slider. Ah, throw another slider. Yes. Oh, Vlad. Vlad. Oh, you got beat, Vlad. This is ball four. This is a 3-1 count. I would think Vlad in a 3-1 count would be so sitting fastball. And he did not pick up the slider. He just didn't pick it up. And he was too aggressive. That's on you, buddy. That's on you. And instead of pulling it back, you went with it. You you leaned forward on it. You saw the slider and you adjusted to swing at it. And instead, and you you didn't pull it back enough. Even if it's a check swing, that's still better than this out. Ah, Vlad, you messed up. You gave him a gift. There's a good pitch. I'll take that all day. Now you go fastball inside. Oh, that's deadly. Oh, that's sick. Nasty. Slider down away, fastball up and in. That is like the oldest trick in the book. I remember even like in like youth baseball in high school and stuff on my travel baseball team with the Brooklyn Bonnies. Uh, I had a coach for a moment. I had, I had some not good coaches, but I had one that was actually really good. And unfortunately, health took him away uh, from, from coaching again. But I really liked him. And he was very much about like telling every single hitter, you see the secondary away. What's the next? And everyone goes, fastball up and in. I'm like, yes. It still works. Even in the majors, it still works. And now Springer's like, what the heck is he going to throw me? I would probably go slider twice here. Slider once gets the out. Okay, fine. This is different than the 3-1 uh, the to Jaguar. This is 0-2. This is out of the zone. So I understand why he's swinging. Right? He's committed and everything. He can't just let it go. It's out of the zone. Everything's fine. Bad one to 3-1. Good one. Great one to no 2 If it's more down, then he'll get the strike out, but that's fine. And then I have two outs in the 7th. Uh, 94 down away doesn't get the call because that's not where he's aiming whatsoever. It's good because his glove needs to stretch. Uh, now it's a 2-0 count. And honestly, I don't really care. 
You still throw the fastball, I think, Gavin Williams, because that's your best pitch. If you want to go slider and you're feeling it, by all means. But I think you still go a fastball. Oh, you go with a curveball. It's too cute. You go fastball 3-0. Don't even, like, whatever. Uh, and is Jansen going to swing at a 3-0, 3-1 fastball? Oh, you throw a slider in there, 3-1. Look at you, Gavin. You're feeling it today. That I mean, that's... This is the best version of Gavin Williams, right? Because he's getting strikes with sliders and curveballs while the four-seamer was dominant early on. It's not as dominant in the last three innings as it was in the first four. He had higher velocity on it. He was able to spot it better. And you guys can see that the fastball was really good in the beginning. Like, you could just put the thing upstairs and it was done. Not as consistent in the final, like, three innings or so. Like, he is tired here. Um, but he's, that's why he's relying, I think, a little bit too much on the secondary stuff. But then again, he has the faith at 3-1. My gosh. Now you throw a fastball. Don't throw a I mean, you could throw a slider if you want. I'll throw a fastball. Yeah, there it is. 96. That's the good stuff. And good to end it on that one. Good stuff, Gavin Williams. Uh, you guys can see what he does, right? I mean, there's a lot of... The, the break on the curveball is really pretty to look at. Um, and the slider. I think the slider is good. It's not an elite slider in my book. It's not this... <laughs> uh, like ridiculous oh my gosh here's the slider pitch and that does give me a little pause with Gavin Williams but if you think of like Brandon Woodruff uh, Woodruff soars with his four seamer and also sinker too but mostly with the four seamer the changeup improved last year in 2022 fine but that's the foundation that allows him to have a better result I think than the pitches suggest with the curveball and the slider as well and I think that's the same way with Williams and he's if he's able to do what he just did which is actually sequence and utilize those breaking balls effectively inside of counts I uh, that just makes a forcing even better I mean at 96 right there just like it is a very good pitch he just needs to command that just slightly better and the other stuff too but yeah lovely stuff from Gavin Williams uh, and I uh, just really excited to see him develop but that is it for today hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, video breakdown we're back with these so but that is also my name is Nick Pollock and may your babs be low and your strikeout high.